Okay, so in today's uh, tough topic, we're going to be talking about um, uh, a little bit about Islam. Uh, but the, the real important question here is, is Yahweh the same as Allah? Um, in today's culture, there's a lot of um, kind of coexist stuff, a lot of relativism, you know, a lot of trying to equate things as the same. And it's kind of funny because this is actually um, exactly the same thing that happened in ancient history. Um, the Egyptians would have a god, and um, then they would relate it to a Mesopotamian god or whatever. And we're kind of seeing the exact same thing happen now. Um, as Christians or people calling themselves Christians become more uh, deluded and f stray farther away from their traditional faith, uh, they are um, um, kind of trying to, I don't know what the right word is, um, combine their beliefs with other beliefs. Um, you know, for instance, okay, so maybe Jesus isn't really God. Um, maybe the things of the Bible didn't really happen. They're just, you know, maybe creative stories or something. Um, you, you know, it's stuff like that to, to try and make Christianity more like other um other religions. And uh, so obviously, as a natural result of that, we see um, Yahweh and Allah kind of called the same thing. Hey, we're serving the same God. And so that really is the question. Uh, how are Christians supposed to look at this? How are we supposed to feel about this? You know, uh, what are we supposed to do with this? So there's just a few things introducing uh, Islam. Um, so, okay. So Islam was started by a... Um, by a man called the Prophet in Islam, uh, his name was Muhammad, um, and I don't want to go too in depth in that. Um, and this was hundreds years, hundreds of years after Christianity. Um, and so a lot of the conversation is going to have to do with the Quran. If you have never read the Quran. Um, it's going to be a little bit hard to have an informed opinion. Um, you can you can pick up a copy really at any bookstore or online. I mean, anywhere. You can probably find it to read online. Uh, I haven't looked, but you could probably. Um, so there's a few things about the Quran that's kind of um, – should kind of clue us in that Yahweh and Allah are not the same God. Uh, first off, the Quran – well – I'll, I'll wait. Let me come back to that. Um, just a few things about Islam and the Quran in, 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 in general. Uh, first off, the Quran can be demonized just as the Bible can be. Um, a lot of people want the, want Muslims to look bad, so they will um, take they will take parts of the Quran out of context just to try and make uh, Muslims look worse. Uh, you know. Um, Anything to discredit them. Uh, one thing you see, especially circulating on social media, is some um, some Muslims in politics have talked about how they are above uh, the laws of America. And what they mean by that is that they are directly under God's law um, because it's more moral than human law. Okay. So with that being said… This is the exact same thing that Christians say, too. Uh, Christians say, okay, if the American government ever passes a law that I have to choose between God and and my, my and America, I will choose God. Well, that means that you are above the laws of the land. See, I, I'm actually very surprised by the things that Christians say to try and make Muslims out as though they are um, evil. So when they do the exact same thing, I don't, I don't know, like, I don't, I don't get that. Um, I honestly think that uh, there's a lot of wisdom in finding more of a not so extreme view of things. And I think that yes, I think that there are some Muslims who are militant. Obviously, that's that's a fact. But there are also Muslims who are not militant. Yes, there are Muslims who come into a country with um, plans of taking over and stuff, and there are some that do not. I mean, it's the same thing that could be said of Christians or any religion. I mean, there's always going to be a, a variation. So the real question is, okay, we're not so much talking about the followers of Allah, but Allah himself. Okay, so let's let's come back to that. Um, 
a lot of the problem is in demonizing Muslims. That's that's where a lot of the a lot of the problem comes from. Um, there are different groups with different views, and, and and Islam is kind of a blanket term, just like Christianity is a blanket term. Blanket term. There are um, subgroups of those, and different different groups see different things as um, scripture, and different groups do not see those things as scripture. Just as the same as Christianity. For instance, in Catholicism, they have um, books in their Bible that Protestants do not have in their Bible. This is a perfect example. Uh, some of them see, uh, you know, this person after Muhammad as, you know, authoritative. Some don't. So it's it really depends on what group of Muslims are we talking about. Okay, that's a very important point. Um, now about violence in um, in Islam, it's kind of difficult because the different groups will interpret the Quran differently, and you have some Muslims who have chosen a life of peace saying the Quran does not teach violence. And then you have some Muslims who have chosen a life of the sword, um, violence, uh, say, okay, the Quran does teach violence. So you really have these conflicting views and different people using the Quran to back up their view, just like people do with the Bible. You know, if, if, you think homosexual marriage is okay, you're going to find something in the Bible that says, okay, uh, homosexual marriage is okay. If you th see what I mean? And so what we're really trying to find out is what does the Quran actually say? What does, in context, in context, uh, what did Muhammad actually believe? What did, um, what did Allah, who actually is Allah? So, okay. Um, Christians fighting, this is kind of an important, important point here. Uh, when Christians fight, uh, for instance, in the Crusades, they are they are acting against Christ. They are acting against what the New Testament teaches. Now, I'll come back to the idea of violence in the Old Testament in just a second. Right now, we're focusing on the New Testament. Um, the Crusades were not ordained by God. And so then you have things like the Pope, who was authorizing this holy warfare, um, which was exactly what Christ told us not to do, which is the danger of a person, such as the Pope, having authority over what Scripture says. Now, when a Muslim fights, it's different, because Muslim fighting was, at some points in the Quran, condoned, and at other parts kind of ambiguous as to whether it was condoned or not. Um... So technically speaking, hypothetically, violence could be justified again. See, Christians were never um, allowed uh, the allowed the violence by Christ, which is where the Christian Church started. The Christianity started at Christ, and it was never um, condoned. And but with Muhammad, it goes back and forth. I mean, sometimes in some situations it was. So the question is, can it be again? And there's not necessarily anything in the Quran that says, no, it cannot. And that's where the issue comes from. Because technically, however you interpret it, you could use the Quran to justify or uh, condemn violence. And so, what, sorry, my dog is um, being whiny, and she knows that she doesn't whine, but every time I go to record something, she starts whining. Then she acts all, oh, he got angry at me. But anyways, uh, and so that really is, is a lot of the a lot of the problem there. Now, Christians who condone um, violence today do so based off the Old Testament, and not the New Testament. So that that's something worth saying. Um, and so we're left with the question: Okay, so what about violence with with Islam? And we don't really have a definite answer, as should be evidenced by the different groups of Islams themselves. Some condoning violence and some condemning it. That should be our first clue that there really is no straightforward answer. Did the Quran um, allow for violence in certain contexts? Yes. Did it say to go and keep on doing this? That That's the question. Um, so now let's look very briefly at Israel's holy war. Um, Israel fought the Canaanites. This is, this is just everybody knows about this. Um, they did this because they were sinful. They didn't do it because, you know... Um, this, that, or the other thing, it was because they were they were sinful, and they were so sinful that God decided, okay, it's time for their punishment, so he used Israel to do that. Okay, but here's the thing. It was never before or since commanded by God. 
holy war has never once been commanded outside of that one occurrence, either before or after. And in the book of Judges, God told them, I will not drive them out before you anymore. And that was a, uh, so that was at that point putting an end to their right to holy war. So we really only have the period of Israel's holy war lasting no more than maybe 100 years. Um, and then it was stopped and never, never to be repeated. So then we get to the problem about, well, what about when Israel fought wars? See, Israel was a nation, and as a nation, they had to defend themselves. They had to go to war to establish themselves in the in the nation. These were not, I mean, in the area, these were not holy wars. These were wars, the same as America goes to war, the same as Iran goes to war, the same as, it's the exact same thing. Um, those parts were not holy wars. So that that is important. Now, it is also important to note that God would help them in their times of political problems, but that is not to say the same as it was a holy war. So, big difference there. Um, as far as the Old Testament itself, it's very obvious that um, war is no longer permitted, according to what Judges says. And, of course, the fact that it was only a situational issue. Um but the Quran never says that. Never once in the Quran does it say, okay, I had commanded you earlier to go to war. Now I'm commanding you to do something else. Um, let's see if I can find it. Um, just a second. I can't find it right now. Um, but it talks about... Um, carrying out, carrying out um, punishment on on certain peoples uh, by crucifixion, by cutting off their hands, etc. Um, and uh, well, let me come back to that. So the question there is: Is Yahweh Allah? Are they the same God? Now, it's important to note that Yahweh was never attested to another God. The name Yahweh was never attested to another God. It was only spoken of of the God of Moses. In fact, this is exactly what history tells us. See, yet nobody worshipped Yahweh. Everybody worshipped their own gods. And then, out of nowhere, Egypt gives a reference, which is the earliest reference to Yahweh outside of the Bible that says, the nomads of the land of Yahweh. Well, we can know that these nomads are more than likely Israel as uh, really by way of, you know, uh, if you take out all other possible answers, the only one left is Israel. Let's just put it like that. Um, and so this is th this is more than likely referring to Israel, which is funny because in Exodus it says, okay, here's Pharaoh, and he says, who's Yahweh that I should worship him? Or who's Yahweh that I should, that I should give into what he says? And then here we have, shortly after the Exodus in the 1300s B.C., um, we have Egypt making reference of Yahweh when they had not but a hundred years before said, hey, we don't know who Yahweh is. So that's kind of important. Allah, however, is a little bit difficult because Allah is a, is a general word meaning more or less God. And so we see some people talking about Yahweh as Allah because Allah is that kind of blanket term. The nearest that I can think of historically um, would be uh, the name El. El was a word meaning God, but there was also a God named El. And so they, the Jews would call Yahweh as El, being God, uh, but not as El of the Canaanites. Um, so you have a little bit of a problem there, and that's exactly something that ha that's happened in, um, in Islam. Uh, you know, you have Allah being used for various uh, gods, uh, possibly... Um, for another god besides Allah, uh, and then you have it used as the one god, the supposedly the same god of uh, Moses and uh, the Jews and the Christians. Okay, so um, here we we have a little bit of a weird thing happening here, though. Um, well, let me. I'm getting ahead of myself. So Yahweh chose Abraham, then Isaac, then Jacob, and his plan was fulfilled in Christ through Jacob, then Isaac, then Abraham. So the arisal of Islam is kind of ignoring the promised plan of God. 
it ignores the theme of the Bible and the message of the gospel and then says, okay, this is now Re Revelation. Um, so Islam kind of moves the progression progression backwards. See, so God used the law to show people their need for a savior. So then the savior came and then Islam says, okay, yeah, but now we're going back to before the savior came. You know, and it'll say in, in in one part, Muhammad will say, or the prophet will say, um, you know, uh, Christians, you know, don't be friends with them because they'll lead you away and, and this is bad. But then another part it says, hey, Jews and Christians, whoever uh, believes in, in, in Allah, uh, you know, it's all good. Um, so you have a little bit of, of ambiguity in the Quran, and I, I guess that's what I'm really getting at. Um, but then we have the problem that Islam really gets its unique worldview from the Bible. Um, this is something that is attested in the Quran itself. The Quran actually says, read the Torah and the gospel. It actually says that. you know. And then it says, this is another revelation continued on with that. Um, so we have the problem of the unique worldview of the Torah that comes up. You know, this God who is transcendent past what people how people think. The ways of Yahweh are not how people think. And then we have um, really two other religions, I guess you could say, uh, branching off from that. Uh, the first is Christianity, which claims to be the fulfillment of is, uh, Judaism. And then the third, the second was um, Islam, who got its influence from Christianity and Judaism. Uh, that's something that is fact. He, stu he studied uh, their teachings for a long time. He says it in the Quran itself. So this is not something that can be, deba can be debated. Um, and it's not the fact of, oh, could a mono monotheism hypothetically have sprouted? It's that it never did. It never did outside of the God of Moses. And so then these other two are directly um, tied to Judaism. So that's kind of kind of a problem there um, because that would mean okay so if he's trying to build on it that would mean that it ha it should it should connect in other words if you read the Quran it's another piece of the puzzle of God's revelation but when you read the Quran it actually doesn't fit in like that it talks like if you've ever read the Quran it's like it's acknowledges you know the Bible and stuff but then it kind of Let's just kind of divert here and follow this path, you know, which is it's fine or whatever. But then to say that this is the same thing is is not true. You know, if you want to believe in Islam, that's fine. If you want to believe in Judaism, that's fine. If you want to believe in Christianity, that's fine. But to say that these all three all three of these things are the same is just wrong. And see, the prophet talks about these things as you know, read the Torah and read the gospel. But then he says, hey, don't be friends with Christians and Jews. And then he says, okay, these people are non-believers, but then he says these people are believers. So you have a little bit of, 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 of a hard time um, with what's actually happening here. Um, and once again, a lot of these problems are due to the context in which they were written. Um, so uh, just a few things in the Quran. Uh, uh, the prophet curses Israel because of something that they had said, but the Bible says to bless Israel. So there's a contradiction there. Um in the in the Quran, apostates, people who lead the faith, are considered replaceable. They'll just God will just put someone else in their place. But in the New Testament, we have God searching them out like an old woman searching for a penny, like a shepherd sh searching for his sheep. So we have a little bit of a of a contrast there. Yahweh seems to be a little bit more um I don't know what the word's compassionate or um Sympathetic, uh, I don't know, but uh, Allah, or, or at least the prophet, seems very apathetic towards people who fall away. Um, or people who do not believe, or people who, you know, whatever. Um, so uh, that's kind of, kind of a, kind of seems to be a difference there. Um, the Quran condones the law and Jesus and the Gospels, even though the Gospels freed us from the law. <laughs> yet it denies it. And it says, okay, yes, um, th uh, this is something we need to believe, but then it goes on and denies it in the very next sentence. You know, it says, for instance, the New Testament says that we're free from the law. 
but the Quran tries to heap more laws on us. The um, the the New Testament freed us from having to practice holy days. The Quran says that we have to practice these days. Um, the uh, New Testament freed us from the dietary restrictions. The Quran gave more dietary restrictions, and so it kind of it kind of modifies the Israelite law. And see, that's the problem. Here is the law, which is supposedly God's revelation according to the Quran itself, but then it modifies that, that revelation and says, okay, this. Which means that God is either not consistent or that one of them is wrong. Now, if the Quran was built on the Torah, that would mean I would opt for the one that was older. That just seems like common sense. And if if God changes, then how do we know that he really is merciful and compassionate? You know, that's one of the things, if you read the Quran, the first part here, the exordium, in the name of Allah, and the compassionate, the merciful. That's where, it's all throughout, all throughout the, the Quran, it says that. Praise be to Allah, Lord of the universe, the compassionate, the merciful. Again, it says that. Sovereign of the day of judgment, you alone we worship, and to you alone we turn for help. Guide us to the straight path. See, but there he says, to you alone we turn for help. But later on he says that help is found by Allah, but also through the prophet and also through um, people of the faith. So that's technically not true. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those whom you have favored, not of those who have incurred your wrath, nor of those who have gone astray. So there's a little bit of a contradiction with Allah. He can kind of change his mind. So how do we know that he really is compassionate and merciful? Maybe he was, but maybe not so much anymore. See, it says there about the ones whom you have chosen, but wouldn't that be Israel? Well, or is it Christianity? Or is it now the Muslims? See what I mean? So you have these, these contradictions in there that really can't be uh, reconciled. Either Islam is true, or Christianity is true, or Judaism is true, but you can't have all of them as the same. Now, Christianity claims that it is the fulfillment of Judaism. So those two can be reconciled in a way. Okay, um, Obviously, there are still key parts that um, have changed. If Jesus is the Messiah, then the law is no longer applies to us, because what good can an animal sacrifice do when God himself has become a man, has been born of flesh to die as a man. See, I mean, it really is no place for that. Um, um, uh, also, Jesus claims, you know, it says, okay, yes, believe the Torah and believe the Gospels, but then the things that Jesus said are disqualified. For instance, Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. This is a reference to God's name, Yahweh, I am. So here we have Jesus claiming to be God, and that's exactly what the Jews thought he was doing as they killed him. They didn't just kill him for anything. They were very, very legalistic. They killed him for certain – they could only bring the death penalty for certain things. And claiming to be God, that's blasphemy, unless you actually are God, which Jesus did raise from the dead. So that tends to imply that his claim was validated. If Muhammad would have raised from the dead – I'd be a little bit more inclined to believe him. But Jesus did. Um, Jesus said that he was the way, the truth, and life. But Muhammad said, okay, you need to follow these laws and have faith in God. So we have faith and works. In the New Testament, it says that works are the result of faith. So um, how were people saved in the Old Testament? By faith. Um just because God showed them how impossible the law actually was doesn't mean that they were saved by anything else. Abraham, for instance, he believed God and it was attributed to him as righteousness. He had faith. You know, it doesn't say he offered a sacrifice and this was attributed to him as righteousness. Um, also, the in, in the Quran, and this is kind of an important point, in the, in the Torah, if someone steals and they are discovered, they have to repay and then add to that repayment. But that's that's it. In the Quran, if you steal, you have to cut off the hand of the person who stole. 
That's a very big point. Okay, now, the, the Quran is filled with stuff like this. Why is that a big point? Because, in essence, that's saying the revelation of the Torah, which the Quran says is to be believed, has now been modified. Okay, and contradicted. Which means, now we've got it down to the truth. The Quran says to believe the Torah but and the Gospel, but it actually doesn't. It says, believe me. Now, the Torah says, believe me. So we have two directly conflicting statements. So that means that either Yahweh is not Allah, or Yahweh is constantly changing, in which case he's not really good. But if he's not really good, then why would he hold us to a standard of good if good, in fact, doesn't even exist? The only reason why there is a standard of right and wrong is because God is good. So if he's not good, this kind of just invalidates the whole claim. And morality really does mean nothing, and truth re really is relative. Which begs the question, why oh why would a relative god be so adamantly against people worshipping other gods? Allah never made the claim that he was changing, or rel relativistic, I should say that. His morals were changing. And Yahweh never made the claim that he was changing. He was his morals changed so in order to reconcile those two you have to say they are something that they didn't say that they were and so there's a little bit of a problem there just because Allah is a development of Yahweh doesn't mean that he is Yahweh there's a big difference there um, in in, uh, in uh, the Islamic faith works right into faith um, Jesus is denied as God in fact he even says Unbelievers are those that say God is one of three. There is but one God. If they do not, if they um, if they do not desist from so saying, those of them that disbelieve shall be sternly punished. Will they not turn to God in penitence and seek forgiveness of Him? God is forgiving and merciful. The Messiah, the Son of Mary, who is no more than an apostle. Other apostles passed away before him. His mother was a saintly woman. They both ate earthly food. See what he says there. The Messiah, the son of Mary, was no more than an apostle. He was no more than a prophet. But if he was a prophet, then he was a lying prophet because he claimed to be God. <laughs> like, it doesn't follow. To, uh, now, if you're of, a, of the Islamic faith, you have your beliefs about what Jesus said. Okay, fine. That That's totally fine. Okay? But to then say that Yahweh... And Allah are the same person is atrocious. It's just stupid. They're not the same person. They're not the same God. Either Yahweh is God or Allah is God. That's what it really comes down to. And that's what I'm trying, that's what I'm trying to show. I'm not trying to belittle the, um, the Islamic faith. I'm not trying to hype up the Christian faith. I am a Christian. But I don't think... People can choose to believe whatever they believe. That doesn't make it true. But they can believe whatever they want. And it's not my job to force you to believe something. I believe that the truth is that Jesus is God, that he died for my sins because I'm a very wicked person. And that in believing in him, I have salvation. Now, I believe that that also gives me a responsibility to serve God with the way I live. And I, and I, and I, and I don't think that, that my good deeds make, God, make me more worthy of receiving God's grace. I believe that it is from a thankful heart that they flow. So Jesus is denied as God. Um, Allah only, oops, I'm sorry. Allah only loves, excuse me, only loves those who have acknowledged him. Um, whereas Yahweh seems to be like he loves everyone. Well, okay, what about the Canaanites? Well, he did give them mercy after mercy after mercy after mercy. I mean, if somebody is raping children, are you going to just keep saying, okay, well, don't do it again. Okay, don't do it again. Okay, don't do it again. Or is there eventually going to be a moment when that child molester is punished for molesting children? And this, I should give an addendum. A lot of people, once again, try to de demonize um, um, Muslim people by uh, the whole marrying children thing. <sighs> that is a very big discussion that should not have a place in this discussion. Um Human history is filled with um, marrying people at young ages, and to try and demonize the Muslims is just completely unfair to human history. Um, 
uh, that's just a whole discussion that is a big can of worms. Let's move on. Uh, and the Quran, it possibly contradicts itself depending on how you how you kind of interpret that, um, but maybe not necessarily. However, it definitely does contradict the Bible. So here you have two problems. Assuming that you can say it doesn't contradict itself, which keep in mind, a lot of people say that the Bible contradicts itself even though it doesn't. So once again, the contradictions of the Quran can be explained. Okay, so it possibly contradicts itself, but if if it doesn't, it still does contradict the Bible, both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, so that's that's worth mentioning. Um, also, it adds words to the Bible and says that God or the people in the story said things that they didn't actually say, and the Bible tells us not to do this. So once again, you have um, you have a little bit of a problem there. So in conclusion. Is Yahweh and all of the same the same God? No, no. To claim that Christianity and, and, and Muslims are the same, I mean that would be to contradict what Christians say, what Muslims say, what the Quran says, what the Bible says, what God says, what Allah says. I mean, there's just so much no in that. Just no, it's not the same. Um, although you know, once again, the Prophet did claim that um, the revelation of the Torah and the Gospel was from Allah. So, anyways, um, I hope that this was somewhat illuminating. Remember, um, people of different faith, faiths are not the enemy. Remember that. Um, also, remember that we were told to love people, love our enemies, lo love our neighbors. I mean, this is just a thing. <laughs> um, so, it would do good to not demonize our enemy. It would do much better to love them to show them Christ's love, to pray for them, to be there for them, to befriend them. I mean, goodness sakes, you know, don't, don't, don't hate people. I mean, but for that matter, you should be befriending homosexuals too. You know, um, we don't need to be living as monks. We'd have to go outside of the world. You know, um, Paul already talked about that. We do, we do need to be 